Today, I want to talk to you about the Lazarus effect. The Lazarus effect. Lazarus was dead. Amen? In fact, he was so dead that he smelled. He stank. He was dead, dead. Real dead. Okay? Real dead. You know, there's, there, I don't know, it, I, there, of course, I don't guess there's different levels of dead, but I mean, this guy was dead. And if we read this story in John chapter 11, if we read that whole story, we, we, we tend to focus a lot of times just on the on the, the, the resurrection of Lazarus there and how it speaks to, you know what, this is, exactly what, this is exactly what Jesus does in our lives when we accept him. Man, he brings us from death to life. He can raise the dead man up. And we, you know, figuratively, he can raise the dead to life. And, but we also are talking like spiritually in, in our spiritual lives. He brings us from death to life. When we step from not knowing Christ to that relationship with Christ, it brings us to life, real life really living. That is new. The old is gone. That is really. When the old is gone, that is for real. When the old is gone. When we enter that relationship. And we tend to focus on that, but there is so much going on in this story. So much more. So much more. And we begin in John chapter 11. John chapter 11, verse 1. We begin there. And we see that the death of Lazarus is happening. The death, the death of Lazarus is, is beginning right here. And we see this unfolding. It tells us in verse 1 of chapter 11. Now a man named Lazarus was sick. He was sick. It doesn't, he's not dead yet. He's sick. He was sick. And he was from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. And this Mary, whose brother was Lazarus, now lay sick, was the same one who poured the perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sister sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. Now, let me stop right here because I, I want to ask, do you, do you think for one minute that this was, uh, like, this caught Jesus off guard? Do you think that this message he got from the, from the sister, hey, my brother is sick, do you think that that caught him off guard? No, it did not. He was not surprised one bit. He knew, he knew exactly what was happening. He knew what was going on, and he knew what was going to happen in this situation. He knew what his work was, and he knew every situation, everything that's happening. And you know what? It's the same way for you. He knows your situation. You know what? He knows what you're hiding from him. He knows what maybe you haven't, you, you think that you, you've just kind of forgot about those things. You've dealt with them. Have you really dealt with them? Have you given them to him? You're not hiding anything. He knows. And it goes on to say that when he heard this, Jesus said, this sickness will not end in death. This sickness will not end in death. When he heard this, Jesus said, this sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory so that God's son may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was two more days. That's kind of weird, isn't it? Like, isn't it kind of weird that he just didn't run off and go, go heal Lazarus? Like, come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. Like, that's how, we, that's, what, that's how we think, right? That's how we live our lives right now. We want it done right now, instantly. Happy New Year, it's 2021, yep. 
and all my problems are gone, it's a new year. Man, it would be great if that's how it worked all the time, wouldn't it? It would be great if, if COVID was just poof and Jesus just got rid of it. Praise God, that would be amazing. But it doesn't always happen that way. It does not always work out like that, does it? There's some reason, right? There's a purpose. There's a purpose to everything that God is doing. There's a purpose. There's a reason. There's a plan. Not to mention, we live in a broken world, right? We do. We live in a sinful, broken world. And so things happen. Things happen in our lives. Situations happen, and we want Jesus to step in immediately and fix them all the time, and it doesn't happen that way. Sometimes we see people get so sick and go through so much, and we can't understand it. Why, God? Why is this happening? There's a purpose. There's a plan. There's a reason for everything that he is doing, everything that he's doing, everything that you have to walk through and that you have to deal with, there is a plan, there is a purpose, there is a reason for it. There is a reason for it. There is a purpose. There is a plan. There's a purpose. Jesus says, he knows, he realizes. Look, he knew before, he knew this. And it says he stayed where he was. Two more days. And then he said to his disciples, let us go back to Judea. But Rabbi, they said, a short while ago, the Jews there tried to stone you, and yet you are going back. And Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours of daylight? Anyone who walks in the daytime will not stumble, for they see by this world's light. It is when a person who walks at night that they stumble, for they have no light. And after he said this, he went on to tell them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep. But I am going there to wake him up. And his disciples replied, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get better. And Jesus had been speaking of his death. But his disciples thought he meant natural sleep. So then he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And for your sake, I am glad I was not there. So that you may believe, but let us go to him. And then Thomas, also known as Didymus, said to the rest of the disciples, Let us also go that we may die with him. Can you believe that the disciples, they are, they are walking around with Jesus. They have been with Jesus. Man, they still don't get it. They still don't get it. And you know what? The fact is, is that a lot of us still don't get it. We still don't get it. A lot of us have been, we've been coming to church for years and we still don't get it. And a lot of people, you know, we probably have a lot of people walking online, watching online. And, and they, you know, they genuinely like, they've never stepped, they don't know. They don't know. And then there's a lot of people probably watching online that, that do know, but we still don't get it. The disciples are right there. The disciples have been right there with Jesus. And they still, they still don't get it. They still, they still don't understand what's happening and what's going on. How powerful, how amazing the man that they are being discipled by and walking with through this life. How amazing and how powerful he is. But the first point I want to take from just that part of this story. The first point I want to pull out of that. I've got got four points this morning. The first one, as as we step into this new year and we step into what we feel like is new, and we feel like everything is just, man, it's, it's a new year. Things are going to change. Things are going to be different. The fact is, is you still have stuff going on. And what I, want, what I want you to know is that Jesus knows, this is point number one. And these are very simple, very simple points. But Jesus knows what you're going through. Jesus knows what we are facing. Listen, COVID-19 did not catch Jesus by surprise. He was not like, oh, man, a pandemic. He did not react the same way we reacted. It did not surprise him. It did not catch him off guard. Lazarus being sick and dying never surprised Jesus. 
Did you see any, did you see or hear any panic in Jesus' voice when he was told that Lazarus was sick? Lazarus is sick. No panic. In fact, Jesus lets us know Lazarus is going to die. Lazarus is going to die. He's sick. Lazarus is going to die. We got that message. Hey, let's hang out here two more days. Let's just hang out here a couple more days. We got, we got, some, more, we got some more stuff to do around here. It's, it's, no, it's no problem. It's no problem. Jesus says, I got this. I got this. I got this. It's under control. I'm taking care of it. Jesus knows exactly what you're facing. He knows exactly what you're going through. People watching out there, he knows exactly what you're facing, exactly what you're going through, exactly what's happening in your life. He knows. You, everyone in here, everyone in here, Know this, Jesus knows what you're going through. Jesus knows what you're facing. Jesus knows what you're going through. Listen, when you come into this place, when you, if you're here with us live and you walk in this building, listen, just by, just by walking in this building, listen, uh, y- your problems don't just disappear or go away. Just by stepping into a new year, counting down and watching that ball drop, and we go from December 31st, 2020 to January 1st, 2021, does not mean your problems just disappear, does not mean everything that was happening just goes away. And it, listen, Jesus knows what you're dealing with. He knows what you're facing. He knows what we're dealing with in this world and what's going on, and he's working in those situations. He's working through them. He is changing whatever you're facing, whatever you're going through. He's still there. He cares about what's happening. Just because he did not run immediately to Lazarus and just because he did not run immediately when he got that message did not mean he did not care about Martha. It did not mean he did not care about Mary and it does not mean that he did not care about Lazarus because it tells us that he cared. He loved them very much. They were special to him but there was no panic in Jesus. There was no urgency in Jesus because he knew the situation. That's exciting. Like that's exciting to know that Jesus knows exactly what you're dealing with. He knows exactly what your situation is. He knows exactly what's happening in your life. And you might, you might, that might bring some fear or uh, some worry, some anxiety. Oh, man, like Jesus knows those things. Like he knows about me. He knows my situation. That's kind of scary. But listen, he loves you and he cares. He loves you and he cares. And he says, hey, bring that, bring that situation and lay it, lay it down. Lay it down at my feet. Let me, let me take that issue. Let me take that situation. I, 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 can, I, I, can, I, can, I can help you with that. That's what Jesus says. Like, I, I, can, I, can, I can help you. I can take that from you. I can, I can walk with you through that situation. But we have a tendency. I, I can imagine that in this moment, Mary and Martha, they're broken. They're broken. They've lost, they've lost a family member. They've lost a friend. And they're broken. And why didn't Jesus, why hasn't Jesus come? Why hasn't Jesus come? Jesus knows what you're going through. And the great thing is, number two, is Jesus cares about what you're going through. Jesus cares about what you're going through. He didn't go immediately, but it didn't mean he didn't care. It tells us that he loved them very much, that he cared about their situation. In fact, in the next verses, when we jump into uh, uh, verse 17, we find out that he arrives, and it says that he comes, and he comforts Lazarus' sister. He comes, and he comforts her. But listen, it tells us that lots of people, Lots of people were coming to bring comfort to them because they're broken and they're hurt. 
But Jesus comes because he cares about what you're going through. He cares about what's happening. See, we get lost in the situation, and we get lost in what we see with the natural eye. And what we see sometimes with the natural eye is we don't see, we don't see the healing. We don't see, God, you're not fixing this the way that I was hoping it would get fixed. It's not happening fast enough. It's not happening now. I thought when we stepped into this new year, when we stepped into this new situation, when I stepped into this new job, when I stepped into this new plan that uh, that that I had for myself, when I stepped into this, when I when I went into this, I thought everything was going to change. And I I prayed and I asked you, God, to to be there in the midst of this and to be with me in this situation. I prayed and I asked, and I still, nothing's changing. I thought this would be better for my finances, but my finances are still the same. I thought this would help my family and, and, and bring healing to my family, but nothing's happening, Jesus. Nothing's happening. Nothing is changing. And that's how we view, and then we view those, and we think that God just doesn't, that we think that he just doesn't care or that he forgot about us when that's not true at all. He didn't show up immediately. But he still knew the situation, and he still cared, and he cares about you. No matter what you're facing and no matter what you're going through, he cares. He cares. He cares. He cares about our situations and what we're going through. Right, right after our worship practice this morning, uh, Robert Walters came to me and he said that uh, a very dear friend of theirs passed away last night. And they've been going over there and they've been visiting with him. People are broken. He cares. He cares about that. My wife is, you might notice, my wife is not here this morning. And, 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 and she, that, that just breaks her heart that she couldn't be here this morning because uh, she wanted to be here so badly to support me and be here. But Yesterday, uh, our, our son Gary, he got, he got sick. Um, he, he, began, uh, he began, I don't want to get, but he began throwing up and had, 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 a, had a, his stomach begin to hurt. And so we've been dealing with that. Don't worry, no fever, none of that stuff, okay? But you know what? We prayed. We prayed. And he's still, he's still sick. We've prayed for him, and he's still sick. And I'm sure that many prayers went up for, for this, this person, that, that, that Robert and Shelby and that family. I'm sure a lot of prayers have gone up for them. But my son was, hasn't been healed immediately. In that situation, God chose a different direction, a different healing. doesn't mean he doesn't care it does not mean he doesn't care there have been a lot of things that can happen in 2020 that makes us think that Jesus doesn't care and he's forgotten about us a lot of things have happened a lot of things that have happened openly a lot of things that have happened behind the scenes in our own lives and we wonder where is God But Jesus knows what we're going through, and Jesus cares about what we're going through. And the thing is, is we see see Jesus say, we're going to wait here. We're going to wait. They didn't go. He didn't go immediately. But it didn't mean, it does not mean that this situation wasn't on his heart. He's he's God and man. And so he has emotions. He had emotions. He had had feelings. And so when he finds out about this situation, and he doesn't go immediately, doesn't mean he doesn't care. 
because I want you to know something about what you're going through and what you're facing as well. And that's my point number three, and it is Jesus is moved by your situation. Jesus is moved by your situation. Jesus is moved by what you're going through and what you're dealing with. If you bring this need to him, he's moved by it. He, he knows. He feels it. And he's going to intervene. But you know what the amazing thing is, is that, you know what, we can pray. We can pray for people who don't even know Jesus, who don't even have a relationship with Jesus. We can pray for those situations, and we can see God move in those moments. We can see God heal people that are far from God. People will move in that situation. And you know what that tells me? That tells me that Jesus cares about situations. It doesn't matter how far you are away from God. It doesn't matter how lost you are. It doesn't matter how close you are to him. It doesn't matter how many times you've prayed about the situation and you haven't seen the victory, you haven't seen the breakthrough, God cares. God is, understands your situation. He knows what you're going through. He knows what's happening in your life. And Jesus is moved by that. It goes on to tell us in the scripture that on his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Four days he had been in the tomb. Four days. And Martha, in verse 21, says to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, God will give you whatever you ask. And Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. And whatever your situation is, and whatever you're going through, and whatever you're facing... It's not over. You call on the name of the Lord. You call on Jesus. You cry out to him. He never leaves you. He never forsakes you. He's going to meet you right there in the middle of that situation. He's going to meet you right there in whatever you're going through. Because, see, the reality is, is, like, for us, Jesus is omnipresent. Jesus is everywhere. Jesus is right there in your situation. He's in that hospital room. He's at your home. He's, he's here in this room right now. He's all over the place working in all different situations. And right now at this moment, right now at this moment, we're seeing, I get, I, we're, we're see, uh, seeing people heal. We're not seeing it, but people are being healed somewhere. And honestly, people are dying somewhere. And those people that are dying, they've been prayed for. Their situation has been brought before the Lord. And Jesus cares just as much about the living and, and the situation where someone is passing. It does not. Just because this prayer wasn't answered and this prayer was doesn't mean Jesus cares any less about the situation and about what's happening. It says that Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection and the last day. I know that. But Jesus says to her, wait, wait a minute. I am the resurrection. He is the resurrection, and the resurrection has showed up in this situation. Hey, hey, the resurrection's here. He has come to your situation. He has met, he is meeting you today in your moment. He is meeting you today in whatever your situation is and whatever you are going through. He is meeting you right now. Hey, Martha, I am the resurrection. And I am here right now. I have stepped into this moment. It came. The resurrection has come for Lazarus. It's there. It's there. It's there. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. See, we, 
We forget about that part too. To be absent from here is to be present with the Lord. And is that not the goal? Yeah, we, we want to live. Life is good. But what's even better is when we know is when we know that we have that true eternal life. That's the best. That's the best when you can walk in that. When you can go through your situation and whatever you're going through and you can know. Listen, I've been doing pastor, I've been a pastor on staff here for 11 years now. And I, I've, been, I've been in hospital rooms. I've been in hospital rooms. I've been in hospital rooms where people have passed away while I'm in that room. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you straight up. You know when you stepped in a hospital room when somebody knows. And you know when you step in a hospital room and in a situation where somebody doesn't know. You know. You know when people know that God cares about their situation. You know when people know. You can tell. You can tell. And I don't know about you, but I want that peace. I want that peace. I want, I want that peace in my life. It doesn't mean, listen... You can have that peace, and let me tell you, it doesn't mean that the devil's not going to come and try to steal it. Because he will. I can testify to that. I can testify to that. I've had many conversations. With, with, I've had conversations with, 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 with a counselor. I've had conversations with, with, with my wife. I've had conversations with the Lord. Going through, going through anxiety and, and panic attacks, the stuff that I've dealt with, I can tell you, the enemy will come and try to steal that peace. But trust. Know that Jesus knows your situation. Know that he cares about what you're going through and, that, and what you're facing. Know that he cares. Know that he cares. It goes on to say, yes, Lord, she replied, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who has come into this world. And after she said this, she went back and called her sister Mary aside. And the teacher is here, and she said, and he is asking for you. And when Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. And now Jesus had not yet entered the village, but was still at the place where Martha uh, had met him. And when the Jews who had been with Mary in the house comforting her noticed how quickly she got up and went out, they followed her, supposing she was going to the tomb to mourn there. And when Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And when Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. He was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Now, I, I see two things happening here. Jesus is deeply moved by the situation, by the pain of what's happening. He cares about what the situation is. But have you ever stopped to think? It says that he is deeply moved and he's troubled. And this is, this is what, when I was reading this and I was praying about this, this is what kind of popped in, into my spirit. I read this, I, I'm reading this, and I'm seeing that he's deeply troubled, he's moved. And in a couple of different uh, versions of the Bible, it actually gives the, uh, gives the impression that, that Jesus was angry. Like, Jesus was, was, was angry here. And so I begin, I begin to think about that. I begin to pray on that. And like, I, I understand Jesus being moved because these are friends of his and him mourning and him weeping. But why was he angry? Why was he troubled? And I begin to wonder, do you think he was troubled because there was doubt? Do you think he was just a little bit angry because he stepped into this situation 
And he still felt that after telling them he was the resurrection, telling them he was the life, telling and, and all that his disciples had seen, and yet they still didn't get it. Do you think that maybe there was a little bit of like, come on. I'm here. This is not the end. And even if it is the end for Lazarus, even if he's not coming back, there's still life. There's still life. There's still hope. And so we see, we see Jesus is, is moved to to tears by the situation. But I think he was also, in the same time, the emotions of, come on. And and, and especially those that have been so close to him and have seen the miracles that he's done. I mean, one of these women anointed, poured expensive perfume on him, anointed him. They know They knew Jesus. They knew him. They walked with him. They were they're friends with him. They know him. And yet, there still seems to be that doubt and that fear. And that's something that, as Christians and even as non-believers, that's something that we have to work through. That we have to work through. That we're, we're, I believe we work through it our whole Christian life. The doubts, our whole lives. Even, like I said, non-believers. We're, that's, that is the just of the situation. That's our crutch. Do we believe? The man that wanted his son healed. Jesus asks him, do you believe? Yes, I believe. But Lord, help my unbelief. Help my unbelief. Well, that sounds weird. Like you just said you believed, but that man's no different than us. That father is no different than us. We deal with the same situation. The doubts creep in. The worry creeps in. And I genuinely feel that that moves the heart of Jesus. When those doubts creep in, you think Jesus is sitting there thinking, hey, I got this. I got you. I understand that, I understand that your world, there's a pandemic. I understand that the world is is been shaken to its core, that it's not, nothing seems to be the same as it used to be. And I understand that. That you're that there there's things happening, but and, and worry and hysteria and 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 things like that are on the rise, and we see suicide is on the rise, and we see anxiety and depression and all those things on the rise. But I'm God says I'm still in control here. You have to trust me. You have to have faith, and we do. We do have to have faith because we see Jesus goes to the tomb of Lazarus. And he tells him, hey, move that stone. And when I read it, like, it, he sounds, listen, this, you read it and it sounds pretty dramatic, but to me it sounds like, man, Jesus, Jesus walked into this situation pretty confident. Jesus walks into this moment and says, yo, hey, Move, move the stone. And we're, immediately there's excuses. Immediately there's excuses. But Jesus, he's been dead for four days. He stinks. What, what are we doing? Like, this is crazy. Why are we moving a stone? This, guy, this guy's been dead so long, he smells. Come on. Excuses. Reasons. We start, we start putting out reasons why God can't do, can't move in our situation. 
oh, oh, Lord, they, oh, God, they've already said that they've only, given, they've only given them six months. They've only given them three months. They've only given them a couple of weeks to live, God. God, you're running out of time. Do you understand that God controls time? Like, God controls time. He created us. He created this world. He created us as humans. He created, he breathed life into Adam. He created us. Nothing's impossible for him. Nothing. And he steps up to the tomb and he says, hey, roll that stone away. This is crazy. Why would we do that? He's, I mean, we buried him already. We, this is done. What, 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 what is this? And, and yeah, this, this is the best part of the story. Because Jesus didn't have to go in and put his hands on Lazarus. He didn't, have to, he didn't have to go in and pray. and No. He just spoke. But Lord, he's been dead for four days. He smells bad. There's no hope here. There's no life here. Only death. Hey, Lazarus, come out of that tomb. Some of us are sitting in this room right now. And you don't, you may not admit it, but you think, you think your situation, there's no hope. There's nothing that can be done. You look at the situation the world's going through right now. You look at the pandemic. You look at what's happening in our world and you say there's no hope. And Jesus speaks to a situation where a, de- a man's been dead for four days and he stinks. And he says... Hey, Lazarus, come out of that tomb. And it says that he comes out. He's got the grave clothes on. He comes and he steps out. Jesus speaks to the dead man. And he comes forward. The valley of the dry bones... God speaks to the valley of the dry bones. And life begins to be restored. God speaks. Whatever your situation is, whatever you're going through, whatever you're facing, hey, this is exciting. This is exciting. God knows what you're going through, cares about what you're going through, sees your situation. And last, Jesus brings, Jesus brings life. He brings the dead to life. He brings the the death, he brings it to life. And all he has to do is speak. All he has to do is say the word. So whatever your situation is, whatever you're going through, whatever you're dealing with, trust him. Trust him. Have faith. He cares about you. He loves you. He knows what you're dealing with. He knows what you're going through. And he's ready to bring you out of that situation. He's ready to bring life life into your situation. He's ready to breathe life back in to whatever you're facing and whatever you're going through. Are you ready? Are you ready for him to do that? Do you believe? Do you believe that he can do that.
Do you believe that he can do that? You know, it's interesting. Another interesting thing about this story is, is that right after this event happens in John, you know what happens next? If you read this, he brings, he calls Lazarus out of that grave. And the very next thing that happens is, is religious leaders and everybody begins to plan and begin to plot how they can get rid of Jesus. That's the very next thing that happens after this story. The very next thing that happens is, is they begin to plan and we see this unbelief. And it, ma it makes me think again a lot of us in this room, a lot, I, I'm, let's just speak as believers right now. A lot of people in this room have seen God do amazing things. You've seen God heal. We've seen God transform lives. There's a lot of people watching this morning that, that have seen that. And there's, some, there's a lot of people probably watching that they've never experienced it. But the sad thing is, is that a lot of us that have experienced it, we still don't get it. We still don't believe it. And we still, when situations happen, and, and I'm guilty of this, doubt still creeps in. We, we just, we see situations happen and we just don't think. We, we think, God, can you really do this? God, can you really do this? Can this really be, can this really happen? And if, if this right here isn't proof that it can really happen, because I'm going to tell you what, people saw this. It said that a lot of people from the village had come to be with Mary and Martha and to comfort them. So don't think that there wasn't a crowd. There were people that witnessed this. And they saw it happen. And the people that saw it went back to some other people. And they said, hey, this guy Jesus, there's something different about him. This guy Jesus, what he's doing is going to be a problem. What he's doing is real. And we got to stop it. If that's not proof enough for you right there, Somebody knew this was real. Somebody knew this was happening because they were going to try to stop it. They had to get rid of him because this was going to be a problem, guys. This was going to be a problem. So if you're doubting, if you doubt that it's real, listen, nobody is going to try to stop something. And nobody's just going to be like, hey, we need, to, we need to kill this guy or we need to come up with a plan to get rid of him and get rid of his followers and get rid of this whole incident if it wasn't real and if it wasn't actual and somebody didn't see this happen. There would be no reason. There'd be no reason to get rid of a man. There'd be no reason to, to have action like this. Hey, we got to stop this. I'm telling you, Jesus was doing these amazing things. He was doing these miracles. They were happening, and he can still do it today. And he's still at work today in our situations. And listen, it's real. And that's why people try to, try to doubt it. People try to tell you it's not real. People try to remove it. People try to get rid of it. People try to shut it down, shut it up. Because they know it's real. They've seen it happen. They've seen people pray. Even today. Even today they try to shut it down because they've seen it. They see the miracles. They see people come from death to life. I'm talking really. They see people's lives being changed and transformed. And if it wasn't real and it wasn't happening, people wouldn't be trying to stop it and shut it down. And people wouldn't be so adamant to get rid of it and put it out and remove it if it wasn't real.
Jesus cares about your situation. As we step into this new year, we step into 2021, things are still going to be crazy. Things are still going to happen. But Jesus is still doing miracles. Jesus is still doing powerful works. Jesus is still doing amazing things. And so I want everybody in this place right now to stand to your feet. If you're watching at home, don't be embarrassed. Don't be ashamed. Stand to your feet and let's give him some praise. Let's give him some glory because he's worthy this morning of all the glory and all the honor and all the praise because he is doing amazing things in your situation. He is bringing us from death to life. From death to life. And it doesn't matter what's happening in your situation. Jesus is there. Jesus cares. He's in the midst of it and he's doing miracles all over the place. We only see sometimes the negative. And like I said, you see those things with your natural eye. You see what, what, what people sometimes only want you to see. People saw Jesus do these miraculous things and they wanted to stop it. We got to stop this man. We got to stop this. God is moving in the midst of what is happening in our world right now. He's moving. And, and you know what? You know what? I, I, I'm, I, I, there's a lot of things that we're fighting over and arguing about that the enemy is looking at. The enemy, the enemy sees what we're arguing and what we're fighting about and what we're and, he, and he's laughing. It's pleasing him. It's pleasing him to see the confusion, the chaos, the, 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 the things that everyone's arguing, fight, ex, even, especially as Christians and especially in the church. The enemy sees that and he's just, he's loving it. Where in reality, if we came together and we prayed and we sought, we would seek after God, what would happen? What would happen if we could get past the stuff that doesn't really matter and focus on what really matters? And listen, the fact of the matter is, is that I, I'm 100% in a group, I 100% believe that as, as believers, if, if we came together and, and, and we really begin to seek God and we really begin to pray, we could see, we could see some real, real, real difference, real changes. I believe that. I believe that it's going to happen. But I also believe that, listen, it's going to take time. It could take time. And there's things that we're going to have to, there's things that we're going to have to deal with, things that may happen that we may not like in that process. But don't lose your focus. Don't get wrapped up in those things. Like that. Like, see, I lost my focus. Don't get wrapped up in those things. Stay focused. Stay focused on Jesus. He knows what we're dealing with. He knows what we're going through. He knows what we're, what we're facing. Stay focused on him. Stay focused on him. If you're in this place today, if you're in this place or you're watching online and you don't know Jesus, you don't have a relationship with him, I just want to take this moment to give you the opportunity to know the one that cares about your situation, that cares about it, and that is the only one that can truly bring new hope, new life, new joy into that situation. He's the only one. So you think, I've made my New Year's resolutions. It's going to be a great new year. It may appear that way on the surface. But if you don't know Jesus, you don't know new life. You don't know new change. You don't know new. You only know the old. You only know what's 
been happening and what's been going on. And Jesus wants to change your situation. And if you're in here this morning, that's you. All you got to do is just simply say, come into my heart. Come into my life, Jesus. If you're watching online, hey, let us know. Let us know if that's you. All you got to do is just raise a hand or even just comment on there. But let's pray this morning.